all know that following a football team, whatever the colour of the shirt, can have its ups and downs. And just like our mental health, some days you're lifting the trophies, others you just want to get out of that stadium and get home again. But football and its supporters can be an enormous force for good when it comes to looking after ourselves and those close to us. I'm Dan Holland, and today in Speaking of Suicide, I'm talking to one of Mikey's Line's frontline ambassadors. Stephen Ferguson is the chief executive of Ross County Football Club, an adopted Highlander now. His playing career took him from Dunfermline, up here to Ross County, to Ayr, Brecon and Stenhouse Muir, before moving into coaching, managing and subsequently the chief executive position back up here in Dingwall. So he's at the forefront of the Scottish game, especially here in the Highlands. Stephen, thank you for inviting me to the the Global Energy Stadium today. I know the season's in full flow. You've had a really good weekend behind you. Um, I want to talk about your role as a Mikey's Line ambassador in a wee bit, but let's go right back to your playing career, back on the pitch. What what mental health support was there for you when you were a player um, back in the day? Um, to be honest, you probably didn't think about it. I grew up starting my career uh, in the 90s. Um, and, and it wasn't discussed and it wasn't a thing back then as, as much as it is uh, at the moment and regarding that awareness that people have uh, and that, I suppose, that increased understanding of, of mental health and when I speak about mental health I talk about good mental health as well as, as bad mental health so um, growing up um, I didn't think there wasn't any support I just didn't know any, anything different back then but um, if, if I knew now uh, if I knew then what I know now, I certainly would have been uh, I would have been on a much um, stronger footing uh, to deal with mm-hmm. professional football. I would have thought, uh, and also um, you know that career pathway that the bumps in the road and the, and the ups and the downs that that everybody has. So um, no, I, I, I would say it's seismically different to when I was playing to 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 the understanding that that football clubs and employees of football club now have around mental health. Was was talking about your mental health, or even being aware of it, both the positives and the negatives to it. Was that even a thing that people were, were, would talk about amongst friends or family back then? See, obviously, having been involved with Mikey's line for a few years now, it's you know it's something that I think about regularly, and, and I look back and I, I genuinely don't think there was the discussions. Uh, if there was, um, I wasn't aware of them. Uh, I didn't certainly feel um, that. That, that was a thing that was going on around me um, and I just feel that you know dressing rooms um, football clubs you know there's a perception of what people think a footballer is or a footballers are um, and I just think that there's a lot of bravado in dressing rooms there's a lot of um, you know there's a lot of um, one-upmanship there's a lot of um, you know, there's a lot of good fun and a lot of good laughs, but there's a lot of things masked in a dressing room because yeah. there's so much going on, uh, and 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 players' footballing careers are actually on the pitch. There's so much going on in the day to day football, but obviously the, the the most important thing that we try to remember here at Ross County is that every football player, first and foremost, is a, is a human being. It's a person. Yeah. It's a person. So um, I suppose that, that that recognition now that um, there's lots going on. Uh, in people's lives uh, and I suppose to get the best out of a player on the pitch they really need to get the best out of the player off the pitch before we actually cross that white line. That's quite a huge shift in approach and mindset isn't it to, uh, to thinking more about the, the, pers- the player as a person first and foremost rather than every Saturday afternoon they're the player and then that's their moment to perform that you, you've Sounds like the game and probably all the people involved in it have come a huge way since your time in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. certainly starting out in the 90s, um, like I said, it was, was, was completely different. But I think what we need to... I think society has led to the change in football because football 100% has changed. Um, what happens on the pitch, off the pitch, how players live their lives, how, um, um, how supporters... Um, view football has, mm-hmm. has changed hugely since since then as well. So I think it's really, I think it's really important that um, we know uh, and we recognise that um, you know football players have a responsibility to the community. They have a responsibility to the people in the stands. 
uh, and like um, they're not just supporters they're not just fans they're also human beings and they're, and they're people as well so um, if you think about the the football club as a vehicle and football as a, as a vehicle to to support or spread a message or um, be aware of, of something then every Saturday is a really really I suppose poignant and and, and you know pivotal part of the community and regarding that contact with other people and and the ups and downs of what you're seeing on the pitch, uh, there'll be equally as many ups and downs of what people are thinking and feeling in the stadium. And the players, I mean, I guess when I think about some of the really big names in global football can be hugely influential upon the fan base. Forgive me if this is a daft question. I guess players at any club level can be hugely influential on that club's fans, whatever the, the level they're playing the game at. I think they, I think they have that duty to to perform that role in regarding that, you know, they are the people that the supporters, fans, and community are coming to see, uh, and I think that it's it's very much or it should be very much a, a two way street mm-hmm. um, where you know that support comes from the terracen but it also goes to the terracen, and I think that's uh, you know the size of our club and geographically where we are. We find ourselves pretty unique in in so many different situations, but um, we need to we need to recognise and realise which which I think we do that we have a duty to care to every one of our supporters and we have to we have to be willing to listen and willing to to, to hear you know get a temperature check from our supporters from our supporters groups from our supporter liaison officers uh, and you know get a real feel for for what's happening um, locally in our community and, and, and the people that's coming to support us. How have the, the pressures on today's players changed from when you were playing. Is it a different set of pressures? I think there's always been pressure on, on players. There, there has to be to pressures to perform, um, pressures to win the game, pressures not to concede a goal, pressures mm-hmm. to complete a pass. All the stuff that that will never will always be there. Uh, but that type of pressure probably comes more from within because they put a bit more pressure mm-hmm. on themselves to deliver that. I think where it's changed, and again, it's a society change. It's a community change. In regarding as just the exposure that football players uh, and people involved in football receive, you know, social media, um, you know, they can you used to have a bad game on a Saturday and you'd go home, you would escape the the, the papers the next day, yeah. and then after that it was done. I mean, you you're not even home now, and and the criticism of players or managers or or, or, or chairman or, or whoever's under the under the spotlight or under fire is is pretty immediate and it's pretty relentless. And it's pretty faceless, and that mm-hmm. can obviously have a huge impact on human beings. Yeah. Uh, and I would say human beings rather than footballers, because yeah. first and foremost, that's that's what we are. And presumably, there's 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 financial pressures as well. We know that players earn a huge amount of money. There's contractual pre- pressures too. So the things that can relate for some people into the real world as well. Not everyone earns the same as a footballer, but we all worry about our job, Absolutely. and we all worry about. The impact of social media as well. Yeah, and, and I think that's important to, to raise that fact. You know, f- we are extremely lucky to be involved in football, and if you if you um, have the luxury of being a professional football player, um, you don't underestimate the huge pleasure and uh, uh, that you get from that. But but comes with that comes the pressure of the stuff that you've just spoken about there. You know, it isn't a long career; uh, it is so fluid. Football and regarding that, um, there's so many moving parts, mm-hmm. uh, and there's so many stuff that that can be out of your control. So to be able to deal with all them things is really, uh, you know, it's, it's a real pressure to, to to be able to deal with them, especially when things aren't going well. Uh, I think any footballer will tell you they really want to enjoy the highs when they're there because, you know, there's one thing in football uh, is that, um, you know, there's a, there's, there's a down round the corner. There's, mm-hmm. there's a bit that, you know, you're going to fall from that height and, and something's going to smack you in the face and, and, and bring you right back down to earth. So, again, just, just trying to equip players for that, um, to have that, I suppose strength of mind is is is, is really important, uh, and then you've got to consider that they have families, they have loved ones, they have people that are also feeling for them uh, at the same time as well. So that that net gets wider and wider uh, for the impact that it has if there's if there's if there's that negative thing coming coming to them on the pitch. How have you had to deal with 
perhaps your own pressures or difficulties, either as a player, a coach, a manager, or now as, a, as an executive, um, when you're going through the ups and downs of the game, but we, you know, we're, we're drawing similarities between the game and, dare I say it, the real world, the rest yep. of us, um, how do you deal with those ups and downs and those pressures? Um, I think I deal with it better now than I, than I ever have. Um, I think um, going through my career, um, I never really had a serious injury till I was maybe 26, 27 years of age. Uh, and then looking back now, uh, that definitely had a huge effect on me personally um, because you, you, you were injured, you were unable to play, you were you didn't really feel part of the group. And with hindsight, how does that affect your mental health? How does a player's injury I think I think injuries is is the is the is probably the main the main factor for me around um, mindsets of players because the, the, the you know that not being able to train all week that not playing on a Saturday going along and supporting your team uh, where you can have absolutely no input uh, on the day and and the one thing that footballers want to do is, is play games of football and once that's taken away um, through an injury. Uh, is, is really really difficult, and and I suppose there's huge frustration. There's they want you want to try to get back quicker than you than your actually body will allow you, and everything that goes along with that. Um, I continually say your body will fix itself. You just need to make sure that you keep your head right, and you need to make sure that that you're that you're giving yourself the space that you need to actually recover from the injury properly for you to return to the pitch, and that's easier said than done. It's and definitely easier said than done. Is that how you dealt with injury? I, again, at the time, I would go back to, to the injuries I had in the past that were quite serious injuries. They'd probably they'd be deemed career-threatening injuries, some of them. And, and the, you, you, de- you just got on with it. And you, 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 you dealt with whatever was coming your way and you felt you were dealing with it the right way to get you through what it was you were trying to get through. But again, that knowledge is key for me. And I think... Um, having moved from a player into coaching and managing and now as a chief executive the involvement I've had with Mikey's line is you really uh, I've tried really hard to equip myself with like a toolbox let's call it a toolbox uh, and basically what's inside my toolbox is just more knowledge of what I've what I had previous around certain situations and around how certain um, things can affect certain people uh, and just making sure that um, that that you, you have that awareness and you have the confidence in yourself to be able to um, trust the process of what you're going through, but also be able to listen and and offer that support and and share the process with, with other people to try and obviously help them through difficult periods that they're going through as well. How important is it to you as as an executive, as a leader, to the you can show your ups and downs and be honest and at times show your vulnerability um, as a way of opening the door for either players or Ross County fans or people following Mikey's line that, you know, it's okay to open up and be honest and talk about your mental health now. Yeah, that's the thing that having this conversation now, I wouldn't have had 20 years ago. I'm much more comfortable um, with the knowledge I now have, or, or I've certainly have gained from from listening and and, and doing courses and, and taking in, uh, you know, educating myself as much as I can to be so that as you, if you are leading, and um, there's a number of people that rely on you to to do the right thing and they rely on you to, you know, they want you to have the answers and and what happens next. And I think it's it's my role to to make it a really uh, you know open door policy. Uh, around myself but also around our senior leadership team at the football club um, where anybody that's working in their team know that um, it is okay not to be okay and if you do need to speak or you do need to um, share something private um, that you would you want to get off your chest then there's definitely somebody here at the football club that that will listen and there's certainly a football club will then support the process after then. I think it's one thing being able to listen to people uh, and and ask people if they're okay and have that confidence to speak to your friends and your your pals who you might see a difference in and say to them how you how you feeling 
are you all right? You don't seem yourself. But it's another thing to then, if they say, no, actually, you know what? I'm really not in a good place. It's then knowing what's the steps you take after that. What's the, how you've opened the conversation, but how do you keep that conversation going? How do you deal with those conversations if or when people have come to you? Um, everybody's different. And everybody, everybody, um, I suppose, communicates and, and shows signs in a different way. And it's just having that, that awareness uh, that as individuals that we're dealing with and as human beings that we're dealing with. And also not putting a huge amount of pressure on myself to give the right answer right there and then. It's just knowing the process. I keep speaking about the process, but the process to follow, there's really, really top, top people that, that, that really understand these situations better than me. And I just feel it's my my position to, to make sure uh, here at the football club that, that we open doorways and we, we have a pathway to get the best help that we can. And, you know, Mikey's line has a number of fantastic people working working with them um, that, that deal with this stuff and deal with it professionally and respectfully with empathy. Uh, and, 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 you know, I would certainly be confident enough um, to make sure that if anybody did come to me at the football club, that we would get that arm around them in the way that we need to. Um, but more importantly, we would sign posts and make sure that they had the support that they needed uh, out with um, my knowledge and understanding that uh, you, you, you can guarantee that the people that they'll be speaking to will, will, will offer the best advice and the best support and I think it's the football club's job along with me and my senior leadership team and the rest of the staff to, to then support that process and um, so I, I, I continually speak about not you know not putting pressure on on yourself to you know to to give information that you're not comfortable about giving you know you just need to listen and you need to make sure that that there's no immediate danger and then and then support and listen, continue to listen, uh, and then give space sometimes when you need to give mm. a little bit of space as well. It's that kind of safe, secure, confidential, and trusting conversation, isn't it? I think that's key. I think the word that you've just finished with there is trust. I think, you know, I would like to think that, that, that staff and supporters and players and whoever else, yeah, I would think that, that, that we, as a football club, have that professionalism and empathy to to be able to um, to gain trust of our certainly of our employees and uh, and and that support that follows the trust is, is is always there. How much does that arm you talked about putting your arm out around someone or the club putting their arm around someone? How much does that arm go out into the community here and in Dingwall and and wider afield throughout the the Ross County fans? Because football clubs are the heart of their community and they can be hugely influential as well. Do you, is there that, that caring arm around the community and what sense of responsibility do you have to help the fans? Yeah, I think, I think we feel a huge responsibility for our, for our area and for our community. Um, that you always want to do more, you want, to, you want to, to be able to have, you know, all the answers. Um, but I think it's important that for us as a football club that, that we are confident and comfortable even being that first step in the ladder you know people are struggling you know we understand that there's people in our communities that are struggling with a number of different things if we can give them a safe haven on a Saturday to come and watch the football where they'll see familiar faces they'll sit in the same seat you know they'll attend the same tea bar they'll they'll go to the same bar uh, and I think that I suppose that consistency and continuity uh, is, is really important um, for us as a football club that we have you know, our regulars that uh, are recognised for the amount of times they're at the football club and, and people around them start to, start to um, you know, build relationships. They may not see each other Monday to Friday, but they know every second Saturday that they're coming to the football and, the, and they've got that, I suppose safety blanket or I would like it to feel like a safety blanket if that's how people are feeling uh, that they're around the stadium it's a safe and it's a, a, face, a place where they feel comfortable and that can be incredibly powerful can't it to help people have the confidence to have those conversations 
because as you say you may see someone only once a fortnight but when you do see them you'll see them you see the changes and you'll go through the same highs and lows of what you watch on the pitch but there's what happens in the terraces as well isn't there yeah and and again i think there's been some well documented um things in social media or other clubs have done and it is that awareness of your surroundings, I suppose, and the people within your surroundings. And, and I think as as human beings, we, we all need to take a little bit of responsibility for that. I know personally I'm trying to do that better because I think it's something that we can all do and I don't think it's that difficult to do. Uh, but I just think, again, if I, um, you know, if I, if I look back, I, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have probably thought like that 20 years ago. And I just think that it's great that, the, the word uh, and, and how people feel um, is, is certainly spreading that, that they, you know that, that, that some people are, are needing a little bit of support and some people are just needing maybe a couple of sentences maybe no more than that maybe that's enough for them uh, and it's just making sure that if we can be kind and if we can acknowledge um, people for, for who they are and what they do then I think um, I think you'll be a better place I, I, I agree with you. Totally agree with you. I think the the piece on social media you might be referring to was um, on World Mental Health Day in 2023. This podcast is going out on World Mental Health Day, October 2024. But I think it was Norwich City Football yeah. Club produced an incredible film that just showed two fans sitting in their seats, and one was full of the enthusiasm um, and excitement, and one was very quiet and downbeat and. He got up to cheer the goals a couple of seconds after everyone else, and then, and this went on, and they would ask, "How are you doing?" Oh, yeah, works all right. So whatever. And um, but then you got to the end of the film, and the guy who was cheering wasn't there, and it just shows that actually, you never might know what's happening with that person sitting next to you every every fortnight, might you? Yeah, that that was exactly the the, the, the clip that I was talking about. I, th- I found that incredibly powerful watching that. Uh, and again, probably realigns my own thinking um, to, to, you know, just, to, I just thought it summed it up perfectly and um, what could potentially be going on around you. And I suppose that just that awareness, but, you know, we wouldn't have seen video clips like that 20, 30 years ago. We just, we just wouldn't have. So the fact that they're out there and it's reaching the audience and, and listen, I'm no, certainly not comparing us to, to that Norwich video, but what it's that bit where it's back to the duty of care. Again, where, you know, why can't for for Russia and the Highlands, why can't you know the Global Energy Stadium here, at Ross County Football Club, be the vehicle to to support as many people as we can um, and make sure that you know that that statistics are improved because when you look at the statistics, you know, I'm saying that things have improved hugely from the last 20, 30 years, which they have, and a lot of people deserve a lot of credit for that. Society's changed. We, we appreciate that. The game's changed, we appreciate that. But we're still a long way short to where we need to be. And I just think if everybody can, you know, can find it in themselves to, to be kind and support, um, but also, um, you know, to share uh, their feelings um, and also listen to other people's feelings, then I just feel that, you know, football, sport, you know, workplaces, um, education, that they're all... They could, they could all be vehicles for spreading that message and and, and, and making people feel more comfortable um, with what's going on in their lives. What, in an ideal world then, would you like to see up here in the Highlands? Would, would you like to see more collaboration between clubs at every level across the Highland area? How, what would you like to see in an ideal world? Listen, I always think collaboration's fantastic. I know that's why we've gotten the collaboration with Mikey's line. You know, it's the first time we've... We've ever had a charity logo on, on one of our first team strips, uh, and it's and you know it's something that we're really proud of. It's it's not a big deal for us to do that in regarding. It's not difficult for us to do it, but it was really important that we that we did it, uh, and and we again have that recognition of the job that Mikey's Line does, especially across the Highlands in our area. So collaboration would be great um, because everybody has the same challenges, but maybe on a different scale. Every workplace, so let's not just talk about football clubs, let's just talk about workplaces where uh, the challenges that we have here with employees or supporters or customers, whatever you want to call them, uh, I have no doubt that every other business across 
Highlands and Islands will be facing similar challenges and the people within it will be facing similar challenges as well. So uh, you speak about collaboration. I, I don't think collaboration is ever a bad thing. I think it's the more, the, the, the more, the bigger you can become, the more powerful you can, can become, then the, you know, the, the, the more good things can happen. You've talked about Ross County Football Club support for Mikey's Line a few times, Stephen, and, and you're an ambassador for Mikey's line, we can we can tell your passion for it just by listening to you just now. But um, and this might sound like another daft question, but but why was it? Why did you want to become an ambassador to to really tell the Mikey's line story and put all your weight and your following into supporting them? Um, again, just by filling that toolbox the last 10, 15 years and and realizing that. Um, Realizing that you know there there is something going on, uh, and 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 there's something going on is is you know there's support needed around it, and and Mikey's line obviously came out of tragedy, um, but the good that's came from the tragedy is is clear for everybody to see, and it wasn't really about me being an ambassador for Mikey's line. It was just my position at the football club allows me to use the football club as a vehicle for everything that you've just spoken about um, around, you know, access to players, access to the stadium, access to supporters, being able to share that message or um, put that, put the word out, uh, however small or however big. I just feel that we are one of the, I suppose, one of the businesses in the Highlands that because of the fact that we play in the Scottish Premiership, that that reach that we have, um, you know, the, the TV reach, the the supporters in the stadium, the supporters travelling to the Highlands. Um, I just found it, I felt it really important that that Ross County identified the, the, their role in it. And I suppose it was my part in that was just making sure that Ross, the, that Ross County was really accessible for Mikey's line uh, and the people that, that, uh, that are involved. And what are the key things would you want any Ross County fan to take away or remember um, when they see that logo on your on your first team strip? Listen, you have to you have to say that I would love every time you see the the, the Mikey's Line logo. You, the, the first thing that springs to mind to me is that it's, it's okay not to be okay, and I, and I think that's a really really strong message, uh, and it's one that that doesn't they get you know that they can't get used enough. Because I think it sums it up perfectly. You know, people put a lot of pressure on themselves when they don't feel okay, uh, and I suppose it's just understanding that. Uh, you know, what what can fill your tank? You know, what can if you are feeling a little low or you are feeling a little bit down, um, it's okay. It's not unusual. <laughs> Everybody else is feeling it at some stage as well. But it's just having the coping mechanisms, having a way that that you can almost self-manage your own thoughts and your own mind. Uh, and, and by filling your tank very quickly, you, you become that, get that positive mental health and positive outlook to everything you're doing. Uh, and, and that's important. So, yeah, I, I think that people, you know, that people need to, need to understand that, um, you know, social media, television, press, you know, sometimes everything's painted in this light that isn't quite real. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Uh, and you know, people will people will immerse themselves in something that's completely unrealistic, uh, and they put so much pressure on themselves to to live up to somebody else's fake lives or um, choices that they're making. And I think it's just it's just a way of um, people recognising and being able to ground themselves and know exactly where they are uh, and know, you know, when they need to, when they need to reach out um, and if they need to reach out. They may never, ever need to reach out. Mm -hmm. They may be able to manage situations themselves, but I think it's really important that if they can manage situations themselves, then there is somewhere that they can go or there is someone they can speak to. And everybody, I think, suspect... I and I suspect everybody in their lives would be able to think of one person if they needed to reach out to go to, to talk to for help. We could probably name one person in our own, in our own mind, our friendships, our families, being able to go to someone for that help. 
yeah, yeah, you would love to hope so. You would love to hope so, and I'm sure that would be the the case. But again, Mikey's line. I'll just use Mikey's line as the, as that one example that, if for whatever reason there felt that there was somebody, uh, there wasn't somebody, I should say, uh, in your network or your 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 close families and friends that you could speak to, then I think everybody needs to know that there's somebody at Mikey's line they can speak to, uh, and they are always available. Uh, and I think that's really important. Absolutely, Stephen. Thank you very much indeed for your time today talking to us on Speaking of Suicide and for all that you do as well for supporting Mikey's line through Ross County Football Club here. Thank you. Here's Shona from Mikey's line with a few thoughts to take away from our conversation today. Great to hear from Stephen there and to hear him talking openly about his, his journey um, and the changes that he's seen both within himself and within the culture um, over the last few decades in um, mental health messaging and in, in talking about mental health. And at a really practical level, he's really got himself educated in suicide prevention and mental health and his role as an ambassador within Mikey's line. Really practical things like their t-shirts for the first time, the players' t-shirts have the Mikey's line logo on and messaging in the stadium there that it's okay not to be okay and their sense of a duty of care, not only to the players, but to the supporters as well. So important to hear that. So um, practical shifts and changes happening. And we really need these changes. The 2023 20, suicide stats for Scotland have come out in August, and they're showing that, as has happened over the last couple of years, sadly, um, there's an upward trend again, 4% higher than the, the previous year um, of people who have died by suicide. It's about, um, well, that is 30 people uh, extra than on the previous year. And um, the rural areas of Scotland, of which Rosshire is one, are more at risk uh, than urban areas. And as always is the case, more, more male suicides than female. Three quarters um, of folks dying are, are males. And this sense of football clubs and sport more generally as vehicles for change, as vehicles for bringing out these... Um, suicide prevention messages, this not just being a problem for the government or for the NHS, this being everybody's problem and something that everyone can be part of the solution in as the club there are demonstrating. So yeah, just so encouraged to hear that, the role of sport, the role of football in preventing suicide. So yeah, thanks so much to, for Stephen for sharing. A huge thanks to Shona and all the team at Mikey's Line for the work they do. And don't forget, if you need someone to talk to or want some help, then you can text Mikey's Line on 07786 207755. That's 07786 207755. Or you can contact them via Messenger, Web Chat and WhatsApp. And the WhatsApp number is 01 four six three seven two nine treble zero or you can go and visit them at the hive four struthers lane in inverness they're open seven days a week from 6 p.m to 10 p.m and all those details and links are on the show notes of this podcast this episode of speaking of suicide was sponsored by mcdonald's in the community and the platform is sponsored by highland-based family firm dnd paving if you'd like to sponsor an episode, do get in touch because we'd love to hear from you. Speaking of Suicide is produced by Adventurous Audio Limited. Speaking of Suicide is produced by Adventurous Audio Limited. <laughs>